Hey, Brie. Hey. So what's cracking? Are we starting a podcast or what? We're starting a podcast. But it's more than a podcast. Right. We're rolling. Right. What the people have been waiting for. The people Whee! being my mom. And my mom, too. I'm <laughs> so excited. This is our first kind of solo-ish introduction episode to Yeah, But Who Cares? Who cares? Who cares? We care. We care. I'm Sasana. And I'm Bree. And we're really excited to launch. This is technically season two. Yeah. But it's like an inaugural season for you, Bree. It really is. And should, should we give a little bit of background? Should we say about how we know each other first <laughs> or the formation of Yabba Who Cares? Let's like take it way back into the days of how we met, how we know okay. each other. So the Big Bang, uh huh, millions and millions of years ago, <laughs> we were atoms very close together in that Big Bang. Yeah, yeah. And when the Bang happened, we were spread apart, light years and light years apart yeah. in the universe. Yeah. Um, and slowly but surely, we made our way together. Together. Um, Whenever... Yeah. What brought us together? I'd say our friends brought us together. We have mutual our friends. Our mutual friends brought us together. Mm -hmm. um, my friend Nina, who nominated me to go on The Bachelor, went to college with Sess. Yes, we were in the same sorority. And she would always tell me about her friend Brie. Yeah. Because of the fact that you were beautiful. And oh the fact God. you still are beautiful. <laughs> you are beautiful. And the fact that. Um, we actually, I don't know if we should talk about this. Like the fact I used Bree's ID. Yeah. I, I used like Bree's ID, game. but I didn't even know you. I like, I hadn't even met you I at the time. I sent you my ID yeah. in the mail. Yep. Um, good old snail mail. Even though I'm five, nine <laughs> and I'm <laughs> near five, 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 four, five, three, five, three and a half and a half. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. I and mean, we look alike. We could be sisters. We could be if anyone if we're ever in public and people say we're sis related, I get really flattered. Oh, I I, I do as well. Yes. I mean, I I do feel a little insecure whenever my friends are like, "She's beautiful." Actually, it makes me feel better mm -hmm. because we're sisters. We're sis we're literally <laughs> related. We were so Adams anytime you're together. beautiful, I'm beautiful too. You're beautiful. All everyone always says that about you to me. Yeah, but enough well. about that. Enough about that. Um, I also went to school with some of your friends from high school that you grew up with as well. Yes, you um, did. So we really had a ton of mutual overlap. friends and overlap. And the kicker was whenever I moved to New York, mm -hmm. you were kind of my first introduction to New York. I came to your birthday and I came to celebrate with you. Yes. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. It was so fun. It was so fun. It was in this very apartment. Yeah. In this very apartment where we're filming. And you know those birthdays where you cry on your birthday? Mm. It was not one of those birthdays. Everyone else was crying, but I was happy. Everyone was crying that Everyone night. Everyone was crying. There was a lot of stuff happening. Um, but nonetheless, I feel like that's just part of growing up. And I think over the past two years, and I mean more broadly over the past six years of us being in each other's orbit, yeah, we've seen each other grow and develop. And you've obviously... We're on The Bachelor. I know. That's crazy. And I wasn't. Should we explain that, that like, overlap as well? Yeah, let's do it. So I went on The Bachelor to date Matt James. And to be clear, for the record, I did go to find love. I did think that Matt James and I would hit it off because he dated one of our friends, a mutual friend. A mutual and friend. I was like, well, if he dated her and he thinks she's attractive and he finds her attractive, then surely we would have also met at a party and he's going to find me attractive as well. <laughs> well, you did. That was not the case. Party. That was not the case. He did find you attractive. I don't think so. I mean, it's not up for discussion. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let bygones be bygones. But basically, our friend had a fling with The Bachelor, Matt James. And for some reason, that just, like, boosted my confidence on the show. I was like, I've got this in the bag. Matt, there is a chance that Matt and I could meet in the real world. Mm -hmm. But this is going to solidify it. Solidify it. And... 
then after the show, you moved to New York, and we were naturally in the same f- friend group yeah. because of all of our mutual friends. All of our mutual friends. And then also Bachelor Nation really flew in, uh, colonized yeah. uh, New York, <laughs> and our, our friend Cole- well, when you say it like that. I, I, is that fucked up to say like that? <laughs> no, I, I think it's funny. I think okay. it's funny. You're not wrong. Everyone in Bachelor Nation ended up moving to, to New, York. New York. And or already lived here. I'll give those people that credit. Yes, as well. yes, yes. Yeah. Um, cosmopolitan city. People are in and out constantly. Yeah. Um, but obviously we need to be respectful. We can really dig into the implications of <laughs> gentrification in New York another time. Why did you decide to start a podcast? So, Okay. That's the one question we get all, all the, time the time from people is like, Mark. yeah, but it's so oversaturated. So why did you, why did you want to do this? So basically what yeah, but who cares is, is we're an interactive podcast. So we launch quantitative surveys on interesting topics mm-hmm. geared towards young people, okay. zillennials, which is what Gen is a millennial? It is Gen Z and millennials marrying together. Okay. Older Gen Zers, younger millennials, yeah. the people in the gray area. The gray. I'm the so The lost gray. middle children. So tell me, what year were you born, first of all? Uh, 1996. <gasps> I think you are a true Gen Zer, though. I'm a zillennial. It well, depends. Well, somewhat. no, definitely a zillennial, but I would say I'm 95. 95 is technically the Millennium. cutoff well, no, of Gen Z. Well, so we're two different generation girlies. Really bridging the gap for people. And basically, (laughs) in our quantitative surveys, um, we really try to analyze and decipher the psyche of young people in America. So what are they doing? How are they acting? What are their sentiments? I feel like a lot of old people tell us how we're acting. There's a lot of research reports about our generation. And it's super boring to read. (laughs) They're very incorrect. And I feel misrepresented. In the broader media. I'm going to say it. I said it. That's so a, That's a very direct term and statement. I Do feel you mis- really feel misrepresented? I feel misrepresented. I think that there's a lot of headlines in a lot of major news sources that kind of point us to, like, really being bad people okay. as a generation. Yeah. And I think, okay, that's a generalization. No, but um, I, but I think that's fair, and I think this is a this is so good because we're obviously going to get into this in the seasons to come. Yes, and and basically what it is is I think there's one massive generalization about Gen, Gen Z, Z for sure as a whole. We're really woke. We care about a lot of stuff. Blah 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 blah. That is clearly not the tr- the truth. Right. Not every millennial is or Gen Z is the same. Yeah, and I feel like I really want to break down what the different trends are, how people are feeling, what the different points of views one have, how our identities and intersectionalities really inform yeah. the way that we act. Yeah. How did you bring the team of Yeah, But Who Cares together? So, I mean, it started just as myself. There yeah. were a lot, there's a lot of different topics and each season is going to focus on one specific survey. Okay. So the first season, and I, and when I sat and did this I actually texted my mentor and I was like I don't really know what I'm doing like I'm a consultant I was a consultant at the time now I'm an investor at VC and I was like I feel like I have I'm so curious about how people are living and I wish that I had a really good outlet creative outlet yeah and he was like you all right (laughs) you should just honestly survey your friends on topics and publish the results and then like talk about the results yeah. and I was like yeah but there needs to be a brand and a platform around you're it. like yeah but who cares yeah who cares who about cares? this stuff and that's where the name came in so I brainstormed a lot of topics and the first topic which was the first season that I did on my own was about investing yeah so or was about disposable income okay. so how young people are spending their money got it um how they're investing their money are they reliant on their parents what was the biggest, okay, sorry to interrupt you, but what was the biggest takeaway of that survey? Because I think the number to me that really stood out, because obviously I started following you along this journey because I wanted to support, you know, um, woo, woo, um, 
There was like a crazy statistic that was like 47% of millennials still rely on their parents for income. Yes. That I, was crazy to me. Yeah. It was, it wasn't that high, but it was Damn it. a high amount of, and so basically what I did is I had the survey and then I sent it to but basically a bunch of people, whoever would take it. And yeah, a lot of people are relying on their parents for financial help, yeah. especially on the coast. So wow. the people on the East Coast, people in New York, the people in Los Angeles mm. were more likely to be relying on their parents than people in like the Midwest, which wow. obviously makes sense. It's so expensive. Yeah, that's true. It's so expensive. And like, I'm not even going to sit up here in front that like I did not need help, but I definitely needed my mom's help when I was making the transition yeah. from the West Coast to the East Coast, especially after The Bachelor, because there was... A moment in time where I exhausted all my resources. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of why I started it. It was like, I felt really bad because I was comparing myself to everybody else who's living in New York and mm. their lifestyles. And it's kind of brings everybody down to earth yeah. to be like, like it's so, it's yeah. so like not black and white. Like not yes. everyone makes like $200,000 and it's just, you know, affording this crazy lavish lifestyle, lifestyle yeah. where you can go out to eat all the time and go clubbing all the time and buy mm-hmm. tables and bottles and strippers and <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry um I mean that was the first time that that was my first exposure to New York was like I was like wow people actually do go to strip clubs here yeah yeah that that was so it. crazy and we do we do talk to a sex worker on our on this season which we'll get into the topic yeah. after but basically it was like okay how can we actually in a rational way, think about how different people our age yeah. are living their lives and also inspire one another. Like men were investing a lot more than women, mm. like a lot more than women. Mm-hmm. And how can we as women really enable ourselves to take full advantage of our salaries yep. to um, make it work for us? And I know so many women in my life who make more than their partners so yeah. that's even crazier it me. is crazy and it was also uh we uh, had it on demographics so like how black women mm. kind of invested different than asian women and that kind of leads us into our next season yeah. which is about relationships relationships. relationships that's where i come in and i feel like it was the perfect segue for you to come in because our episode kind of was about your journey towards understanding your different types of relationships in your life. Yeah, that episode was so eye opening in so many different ways because one, you know, The Bachelor was a really pivotal moment for me in my life because not only did I come off without a job, but I came off without a job and no man <laughs> and not knowing what the fuck I was going to do next. Yeah. And there's something so weird in me. Maybe this is like the Sagittarius in me where like as soon as my whenever my life is like stable and normal, I'm like I'm bored. Something is up. I don't yeah. like this. And I just will really like twist it the F up, which that was the bachelor for me. Mm-hmm. Like I literally was like, okay, I'm quitting my job at Facebook as I was a comms manager, product comms manager at Facebook. And I'm going to go on this reality dating show that I've never watched in my life. And that I've sh- shat on before so much. I literally only watched it just so I could like participate in conversation with my coworkers. Wow. I'm going to go on this dating show and then I'm going to quit my job. Not yeah. only like I had to make the That's decision a great job to quit my my it was my dream job, my dream. And by quote unquote dream job, my dream job was working in tech out of school. So mm-hmm. I went on our school, offered us these like mini micro trips around the United States where you got to go explore different industries, hear from different like top companies, Fortune 500 companies about like what people did, what the companies were. And I remember going to Silicon, going on the Silicon Valley trek. And that was like, oh my God, these people get to nap all day. They get free food. They get- Allegedly. (laughs) Allegedly. They get to nap all day. They get free food. They have the best life. Like everything is paid for. They get haircuts at work. Like I was like, I have to, I want to be in tech. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work in tech. Fun fact, I don't even know if I've ever said any of this, said this out loud, but 
I interviewed for a job at Adobe, I think three different times and got turned down every single interview. Wow. Literally. And then you kept coming back and I kept coming back. And it, it just so happened that I came back for Facebook and yeah. that's where I started my career and my journey. And then I was leaving that job all behind. I was leaving behind a really stable income. I was leaving behind, um, a really like stable life. I felt like I was very happy and I yeah. kind of leaped into the unknown. And not only was the bachelor pivotal in that sense, in my relationship and my relationships in life, but also financially, you know, coming out of it, mm-hmm. the bachelor's likely like just um, a, a an influencer pipeline or a pipeline where you go from reality television to influencing and becoming like a social media, you know, celebrity overnight. And I can't necessarily say that that happened to me, but it definitely changed my life in terms of my finances and my financial success. Mm-hmm. I ended up making more money going on, you know, coming out of the show and taking this path of social media than I did at work. And Mm -hmm. even today I make more being an influencer online than I do in my day job. And so there's something in me that just like, I just can't quit it. I just cannot. We want to work hard. We want to work hard. We're really, really driven. Mm -hmm. And that's what I felt like it was for me. And so that episode that we did on our finances and, that first episode together, the chemistry was there. We had the best that was, I had overwhelmingly positive responses from our friends and everyone that listened to that episode. Like you need to start a podcast. And that's, I, I'd been on so many episodes at that time where I was like, this is the push that I needed was going on this episode with you feeling out that vibe and that chemistry. And you were the ultimate person that pushed me in that direction of like, Mm -hmm. Let's come just on. Do it. Let's do it. I remember I called you after you a did. little bit after. Yeah. And I was, I was like, at home in Houston. Yeah. And we were just chatting and like, I don't know who suggested it, but I was just like, I don't know if it was you or me, but we were just like, you should just come on the next season. Just come on the next season. Let's see what happens. Yeah. co host because it's so much, so much better to start stuff with a friend than it alone. Is. It is very lonely it is. doing it alone. So it is. And I, I would have never it. done it alone. So kudos to you for doing an entire season on your own by yourself. I had a team. You had it. You did. You had a full team. I Serena team. McNiff is looking at Serena. us. She's like, what about me? What about me? Tell me who Sess is if you were on a date. Okay. My name is Susanna Allen. Um, I was born in South Africa. That's where my name comes from. It means little sister. Does it really? It means little sister. Wow. Um, I had no idea you learn something new every day. Every day. Even about your podcast co-host. <laughs> and friend. And friend. <laughs> um, I moved to the East Coast. I moved to an island off the Cape, uh, coast of Cape Cod. And what then island was that? Martha's Vineyard. Okay. <laughs> and then I moved to Seattle where I went to high school. I went to an all-girls Catholic high school um it was awesome it was 50 girls actually probably less than that like 48 girls was it lame um no it was great it was like a stem oriented school then I went to the University of Pennsylvania where I studied politics philosophy and economics and I minored in Mandarin Chinese go off sis literally go off in Mandarin right now ni hao well I know what that means ni shou zhong wen you did not just call me stupid (laughs) <laughs> I called her stupid and Mandarin on another episode, which was mean. She um, did. My tones are really bad, so no one come after me. Okay. Um, and then I was a consultant for several years. I worked in digital transformation where I actually led and did a lot of projects that were similar to this one. So okay. I d- led quantitative and qualitative projects Amazing. for large companies that wanted to launch new business lines or new products um, to speak with their customers and really evaluate how they can go to market as successfully as possible. So that is where the survey analysis quantitative background comes from, Mm -hmm. from doing it at my day job. And I feel like it really has enabled me to be able to break these really big problems into small chunks and biteable pieces, bye, 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 (laughs) where um, we can really have a grounded conversation, but people, individual people make up our society. So like how are individual people actually thinking and feeling? What actions are they actually making? 
can I literally just say like you're speaking to my soul right now because I speak in generalizations and I notice my friends do Mm -hmm. all the time. My boyfriend who's very like, who's very like data driven, he's an investor as well. He'll always be like, he'll always, I'll say something. He'll be like, did you look that up? Like, how do you know? Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a generalization and it because it's because everything is like I'm going off of my own personal experiences, which I think is so fair. Mm -hmm. But whenever you actually speak in forms of quantitative data and you actually are speaking about truth and fact, Mm -hmm. it's very, very different and helps you make way more informed decisions than saying, well, I think everyone's doing this or everyone must be doing this this Mm -hmm. which goes to the headlines where it's like and there are patterns and it's will be cool to figure out what the patterns are um especially for the topic of our next episode but yeah I feel like we got each other when it's like let's actually dig deep into what people are feeling and thinking yeah um so now I am a VC so I specialize in investing in consumer technology and it is my dream job and I'm loving it before we get into a little bit more about what I'm doing yes um currently I will just give a little bit of like backstory I'm originally from Texas despite what it says on Google with me being from San Francisco don't believe everything you read online Mm -hmm. because a lot Mm -hmm. of the times it's inaccurate which was very weird to me whenever I was looking at reporters like actually publish in like very credible reputable sources that you know I'm from San Francisco California I was like that's just literally not true and offensive no one asked me no one asked to even interview me like get it right but anyways I'm from San Antonio Texas um I had the opportunity to do a school year abroad in Spain which is actually where I met my best friend who Nina, who nominated me for The Bachelor, and also was my introduction, I think, to you very early on in college. Um, So I lived abroad in Spain my junior year of high school, so I'm also bilingual. I went to school in California. I went to school in San Diego, and then I graduated from San Diego, and I went on to studying. um, I went on to Facebook. Why did I say studying? I didn't go on to studying, but I went on to Facebook. Mm Um, I majored in finance in San Diego and I ended up going into communications, which I had zero background in, had never taken a class in comms or communications whatsoever, but I was very drawn to this aspect of storytelling, um, across different people, across different brands. And I think we'll get into this later on in the episode, but this, this notion of like really being a voice behind, you know, bigger players and bigger thinkers in our worlds and in our industries and communicating to audiences really stood out to me. And that's still something that I'm very passionate about is, is storytelling. Um, but I eventually ended up quitting that job to go on to something bigger and something better. bigger and better. <laughs> you know, ABC's The Bachelor to date the first black Ooh. bachelor in history, um, who I knew of at the moment and at the time. I think our season was the first season where they won, announced The Bachelor early, but also he was someone that we I had a mutual friend with. So. Yes. In my mind, I felt like this is someone who I really could meet in real life and could really hit it off with, and I'm going to win. So I'm going to quit my job to for love. I'm going to quit my job for love. Why not? It was in the middle of COVID, the middle of COVID, middle of the pandemic. I had no idea what I was doing. I knew that I wasn't happy at Facebook, and so I was looking for something new. Mm-hmm. I was looking to take on new opportunities, and I was also looking to date a really fine-ass man. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. So I did it. And <laughs> I went on The Bachelor. I came in third place, as everyone knows. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Wait, that's like, you can't. We have to say. Okay. I went on The Bachelor. You have to watch if you haven't tune watched. Tune in tonight. Tune on. in The Bachelor of how far I made it. But I, I'm here now. And I did a ton of podcasts after the show podcasting was something that I really wanted to do. I signed with a talent agency coming off of my season and I'm still signed with a talent agency. Um, I had to let go of my agent because I was 
bound in a contract that I couldn't, you know, do any other shows. I couldn't like take on any other like hosting roles in that form. Mm -hmm. Um, but I am still signed with my talent agency for, um, all social media purposes, paid brand collabs, partnerships. Um, and I also, I, it never, me quitting my job at Facebook never took me or steered me away from still wanting to have a career Mm -hmm. and still being very driven. And so that was something that I knew I wanted to do the entire time. So I had a goal of moving to New York. I took on a role in New York and now I'm at a startup. I'm a brand manager at a startup, Lumanu. It's actually an invoicing tool for creators and freelancers and 1099 workers, which is amazing because something that, you know, I didn't realize until I actually started making money from like brand and paid collaborations was you get paid on like net 30, net 60, net 90 day terms. So I remember first starting out with my first paid partnerships and I didn't see a check come in for months. That's And like I was crazy. like, isn't this supposed to be a really lucrative career? Someone's job? lying. Everyone's like, lying. Where is the money? So Lumanu, we allow you to send invoices through a platform and you also can get paid um, up front upon completing all of your deliverables and work for a campaign, which is amazing and it's nice. But I'm at a startup and it's actually been teaching me so much. It is the complete opposite from big tech, Mm -hmm. the complete opposite from Facebook. But I feel like I'm learning so much that I just it opens up my eyes to a whole nother world in startups and startup life that I was just fully missing and it's helping me also realize a lot of how people work like founders and CEOs and where you kind of start to where you get to and where you're going and that is very fascinating to me right now wow I feel like when you just when you told me that fact that influencers creators don't get paid (laughs) I was like not right away right away I was like I mean I'm still missing my check from like where are you it starts a really interesting conversation yeah it does. like and it's nothing against because this is really this is how it works like these this is kind of all big brands across the spectrum like it's not like one standout you know moment or issue Mm -hmm. or anything but I think it just goes to show like how much brands can rely on influencers and creators for marketing for brand awareness for reach for their go-to-market but still treat them with so little like yeah. respect as a, an actual business entity. Yeah. Like just because I'm an influencer or a creator doesn't mean that I'm not running a business. It doesn't mean that, you know, I still need a cash flow for things yeah. that I need to buy, like start this podcast. Oh yeah. If anyone <laughs> wants to sponsor the podcast, please let me Subscribe. know. Subscribe. <laughs> okay, so now we're talking about season two. And what the topic of season two is. So I would like a drum roll, please, of everybody in the audience. An audience of one. Who is not on the camera. Our second season is about relationships. Are you guys experts? I'm not an expert on relationships. I am not. I lost. I lost. You lost. You're part of the 97% of losers. Literally. It's actually like 99. 99. Oh, wait, no, we did the math. Well, of all the people that auditioned to be on the show, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not a relationship expert. We're not relationship experts, but we want to really understand the intricacies of how Zillennials are dating, online dating, how they're how they're navigating their general relationships in life from yes. friendships to your relationship with yourself to your work and professional relationships yes. yeah to your familial relationships like our interpersonal our interpersonal relationships yes. it's kind of all a blur it is all a blur i feel like once a year a couple times a year every quarter i like write out every sector of my life And I write the different goals in each sector. Yeah. And like in relationships, there's like three sectors in it. What do you want? It's like romantic, familial. Yeah. Professional. Professional. And then relationship with self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like it'll be a good way for us to kind of break down Mm -hmm. how us in our 20s are navigating it imperfectly. Yeah. And how different people who have different experiences and different 
factors, uh, like life experience navigate their relationships. Yeah. Who are some of the people we have? I mean, can I just say, like, even just talking to the people on our podcast, this is mm-hmm. why I wanted to do podcasting in general, is that you get to meet and talk to so many new and different people that just don't come from the same background as you, don't have the same perspective as you. Like, it yeah. really just helps me um, kind of expand my view and perspective on the world and especially mm-hmm. relationships. But I'm really excited because we bring on some amazing people to talk about relationships. I'm really looking forward to the Rachel Kirkconnell episode. Um, her first, was that fire? Was that? Lightning? Yeah. Yeah, it's lightning. All right. And thundering. We might be stranded here. I'm getting really scared. The world's longest. Po- Should we ha- go on Guinness of the so world's longest So I'm not going to be able to make episode? my spaghetti squash tonight. <laughs> That's all I've been thinking about all day is my spaghetti squash. I thought you were thinking about how great I am as a I co-host. Really, I really have been. But now I'm like, it's nine o'clock. There's no way I'm going to go home and bake my spaghetti squash. No. That's like when there are people are like late night, quick and easy recipes. And then they chop out an onion. That's literally what I was planning on doing. Who has the time to mince an onion? Is that mincing an onion? Chopping. Mincing. Chopping. Yeah, mincing. Chopping an Same onion. Thing. I feel like I'm a lazy cook. I want to be better, though. Let's set. We should set goals. I'm willing to go the extra mile to eat good. Yeah. Uh, like make a reservation. Cook. Oh. I'm, I'm a great cook. Yeah, I, so. I'm great at making. I'm great at resi. Mm. I'll come oh. to you for my reservations. So horses combined. Wait, tell us about your favorite episode. Okay, my favorite episode. I don't have a favorite episode, but I'm really looking forward to the Rachel Kirkconnell episode. She talks about the controversy of The Bachelor and kind of what that means for her now, two years coming out of the whole BLM movement, ABC's response to the BLM movement, which was um, giving Matt James its spot as the first black bachelor. And as someone who, I founded a nonprofit called Anti-Racism Fund. And what, and I'll talk about it more um, at a later date, but obviously the fund speaks for itself. And essentially what we try to do is we fund projects that are really going to help eradicate racism Mm -hmm. and so I was very thoughtful and as a onlooker uh, from your season yeah I it was fascinating yeah to see the response America had to the BLM movement Mm -hmm. to the murder of George Floyd yeah. And then Rachel Kirkconnell, Matt James, is somehow in the, <laughs> the, up tornado, in of the tornado of it all, which I felt was so interesting how pop culture and media and entertainment can really dig deep and kind of be like indicative of how people are feeling about a larger, more serious political issue. Yeah. And so it was really fascinating to chat with her about her experience coming two years out, yeah. especially as black woman. Yeah. And it was great. Yeah. So. And we dive into this a lot too, even with, you know, even with our, a guest that I'm also really excited for my favorite episode, um, Cole, where we talk about like us and our dating preferences and who we decide to date and like, you know, really one of the biggest things and the biggest takeaways from my season of The Bachelor was dating Matt James. Like, part of the reason why I felt so compelled to go on to that season to film was because he was the first black Bachelor, and Mm -hmm. I really wanted to be a part of something historical and something that was, like, a really big moment and opportunity for black people. Like, I was like, if I would ever do something this, like, crazy Mm -hmm. and outlandish, it's going to be this. Yeah. And even though it didn't obviously end up in like a quote unquote, like perfect scenario in my mind at the time, it just, it opened up my world to everything that I was felt like I was missing in my life. Yeah. And I think our identities when it comes to dating is really 
interesting and that's I'm also really excited to chat about that like yeah I remember growing up I was the only I was one of I was the only black person in my grade same but I was the there was another half black individual (laughs) and she's amazing and it's very much like I felt like my identity was debated a lot in like YouTube videos it was always like asking people on the street like would you ever date like a black person or an Asian person and it's like very like hyper conscious that Mm -hmm. like different demographics are like less desired yeah in society yeah so yeah I think that it'll be interesting for us to really dig deep into people's preferences when it comes to dating past just race like religion socioeconomic status age sexual orientation and preference uh gender yeah and how those different things kind of span out past just the media blanket lines which is like (laughs) black women are the least desired race yeah a hundred percent and really digging deep into like how who is behind that and like how do people feel so yeah i love that i'm so excited for this <laughs> and I will say, like, even though Brie and I have our lived experiences and have experiences taking coursework and gender studies and race studies and all of these different things, like, we're not experts. No, we're not experts. And we're learning and we want to learn alongside our audience. Yeah. But thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening and tuning in, making this far. We really appreciate it appreciate it hello everybody thank you so much for listening to yeah but who cares we care a lot about what you think and actually your reviews really help us out so please like subscribe follow or comment and leave a review even if it's negative we want to improve and i'd like to give a big fat disclaimer we are not professionals we are not therapists we are not financial professionals so please seek out professional help Um, and this podcast was produced with our friends over at Yeah But Who Cares, including our trusty producer, Serena. Serena. Um, it was also produced in partnership with Under the Influence. Shout out Under the Influence. Shout out Under the Influence. Where can people find us? If you want to find us, you can find us on our personal pages, Bree Springs and Sasana. Yes. But more importantly, you can find Yeah But Who Cares on Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube. Did I miss anything? I, that's actually the most accurate one. Yeah, that's the most. Those are the most important ones. Yes. So thank you. Goodbye. See you next week. Kisses. Kisses. Kisses.